six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother.
Freeman Auditorium starting at 6.30, like, no, at 7 o'clock, and they're going to be only be talking about the cost of education. It's not like a political stump speech or something. No, like, no, like, hey, aren't we great? Isn't life wonderful? Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cost of education. You might want to go to that. This dude, actually, it's the big dude on the left. Looks like he was a World Wrestling Federation guy. Uh, he, um, he's a really interesting, cool guy, from what I can understand. So anyway, definitely strongly encourage you to go. All right. Also, just a quick thing. How are you? How, th whoever's doing the bike thing, you got it? You got something on that? Oh, you got tickets? All right. If you want to go, if you want to go tonight, come. She'll have tickets after class. Whoever's doing the bike thing, just see, see Jeff after class and just discuss how you're going to do that over the course of the next few days. Okay. How are you going to work it out? Um, like how you're going to choose names or something, whatever you're going to do. Oh, yo, and these guys are selling little tiny figurines. That if you, yeah, you can use them for target practice if you go to the range. If you can, if you can hit those things off from like 30 feet, you'd be killing it. All right. Uh, so listen, we're... So let's start. I think, I think we have a, we're going to have a cool class today. Um, right? Uh, all right. So if we were in a different part of the United States, the, the content of this class would be... So there are two things I want to say. One is, let me back up. I've pretty much given up the idea that um, I need to ever come in here and just give you lots of information. A few factoids make sense um, here and there that you wouldn't think yourself to look up, right? And, you know, today I was just looking up some stuff on the on what we're going to talk about today and I was just you know jumping on my computer and just kind of looking around and and it was just really striking to me how easily in s I was able to just find all sorts of information and so sometimes students and this goes follows from what Lori said in class the other day about education um a lot of times students will say, hey, you know, we just want, we want to learn, you know, we want, we want you to give us information or something. And I think, why would I ever waste time giving you information that you could do on your own spare time with your phone? You know, the, the, these phones are really amazing. You just go to this thing called the Google, as George Bush called it, and you just look stuff up. And, you know, you get pretty good at figuring out, like, where the good data are that you can trust and so on. It's amazing what you can find. So why would I ever come into class and do that as opposed to have some other kind of conversation that maybe it would be more difficult to have? So I just want to remind you that we are continuing on with that journey. And next week, we have two really awesome classes because we have some guests that are going to be coming in through video. Um, but today... Uh, we're just going to go, we're going to have another conversation with some of your classmates. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is, if we were in a different place, a different part of the United States, this class would be very different. So if we were in the Southwest, for example, we would be heavily vested into, in Chicano issues, um, Native American issues uh, that would just come out in lots of different kinds of ways. Um, if we were in the Bay Area... Trust me, we would be talking about Asians and Asian Americans far more than we would ever do at a place like Penn State. I mean, that would be the core issue. That would be the, the divide, the thing upon which everybody is sort of um, thinking about things. And, uh, but, you know, we're here at Penn State. With that in mind, I want to talk about two groups that are often overlooked in the conversation certainly in the eastern part of the United States, as we talk about race and ethnicity. And those two groups are Asian Americans and mixed-race Americans. 
So we're going to take half the class talking about Asian Americans, and we're going to take half the class talking about mixed race Americans. And what I want to do is bring some folks up to the front, and I, and I want to have the conversation, or I want them to say the things that I understand to be uh, true in the Asian American community, not the Asian community, the Asian American community. Um, although it's, it's very complex, there are uh, many different groups, many different people, lots of many, many different experiences. But I think that it will be really valuable to hear from your classmates about uh, some of the things. So I know I talked to a few people before class who are Asian American, and I want to have about six people up here. So like who, wait, you're going you're gonna to do it, right? And you're going to do it. So the two of you come up, and I talk to somebody at the top who's going to, yep, you come down and was there and I need like no come down yeah whoever no I don't care who I need a couple guys though right now you're you're not Asian American though right oh you are are you oh no kidding I I didn't realize that all right dude all right we'll talk to you man all right you come on up and I need someone who's Asian American but like from India Asian American Indian or Pakistani or something well hang on Wait, is that you? All right. Okay, come down. So can you... We're ready. Yeah, come down. And hang on. Bro, but you came down. You were down here, weren't you, already? You've never been down? All right, come down. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, let's go. Uh, dude, you're on. Asian American? Look at you, man. Come on. Of course you're Asian American. Look at that. You have an alligator on your sweater. Oh, dude. What's up, man? Have a seat. Here, you can, you can hang it, sit right here. Do you want to sit on the table? We're going to be up here for about 20 minutes, man. Do you want to sit on the table or do you want to like, is it better? Do you want to sit on the table? All right, man. All right, man. You can sit, a couple of you can sit on the table and then a couple of you can stand. So you can go stand on the other side if you want. Okay, so uh, first off, let me, let me just get your name and we, let's hear, who, who are you and where are you from? I don't want to go first. Okay, hang on, she'll go first. Um, I'm Sarah. I'm from upstate New York, but I was adopted from China when I was 16 months old. Adopted from China, 16 months old. Okay. Yep, that's you. Push it up. Um, I'm Gwen. I was adopted at six months from Vietnam, but I'm from Texas. You're from Texas? Originally from Jer Jersey, though, right? I mean, like, technically. Technically, all right. Texas. You're still all right. Um, my name is Angel. I was born in New Jersey. <laughs> and where's your ancestry? Um, my parents are Taiwanese. Taiwanese? Yeah. Okay, you go. Um, I'm Lahari. I was born in India, but I moved here when I was like two. And I live in New Jersey now. In New Jersey? Yeah. Golly, where in Jersey? South Jersey. South Jersey? All right, bro. What's up, everyone? I'm Jack. I was born in China, moved here when I was four. And I'm, I live in Pittsburgh. You live in Pittsburgh? All right, Mom. Hello, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm born in Los Angeles, spent my whole life there. Um, and my grandparents are from South China, Guangzhou. Cool. Uh, yo, I'm Samir, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, born and raised. And my parents are from South India. From South India? Are you Muslim? No, Hindu. Hindu? Yeah. Samir, S-A-M-I-R? Yeah. yeah, it just sounds like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. So listen, man. Um, so where do you all... F so what we're going to do, not each person is going to answer this question, but I want to... Where do you fall in the race conversation? Where do you fall? Where are you? So you come to a class like Social 119. We're going to talk about race. Anytime anyone thinks about race relations in the United States, they think certain things. What do you all think? Where do you fall? What goes through your heads? What are the issues? Just, this is a very open general question. I'm going to get specific, but I just want to see if anyone has anything to say to this. 
Like, you know, are, do you consider yourselves, do you want me to get more specific? Uh, are you, do you consider yourselves a minority? Like people, we use people of color. In this class, I often say people of color. I talk, talk about white people, black people, brown people. So you're just brown people. Like, where are you? What are you, what are you thinking? What goes through your minds? What are the issues? Anybody? Jack, you've got to have something, man. I mean, I just see myself as Asian American. Um, they like to coin us as model minority, I guess. The, you, you, do you consider yourself that? No. You I don't just... consider yourself? Hey, listen, when you guys talk, you got to talk. Hold okay. the mic really close to your mouth. All right. Okay. So, all right, so you consider yourself Asian American? Yeah. And that, is that how you always talk? Yeah. Do if people say, hey, you're a minority, are you, do you feel like you're a minority? I mean, do you use that term ever? Not really. I mean, I just haven't seen, like, people refer to me any differently. All right. Okay, yeah. somebody else. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, I can talk about that. So by my no model minority, I feel like I benefit from the privileges and sort of, like, my family backing me up and giving me a lot of resources to do well in school and to get really good jobs. But at the same time, I identify, because I, f because I am not white, I identify with a lot of like black and Hispanic people and their struggles and the discriminations they face and some of the, uh, like we, we feel transgressions too, we, we're treated bad too in certain ways that aren't talked about. And so when I hear black people discuss it or when I hear Hispanic people discuss it, I like really relate to it. So how do you relate? Like, what can you say more about that? And does anybody else feel? Could anybody else speak to that? What do you when you yeah. say you relate? So a, a big topic I hear about is fetishization, and especially of Asian women. And I know it goes across a lot of races. Um, so that's something when I hear it, I get mad, and I identify with a lot of people like that. Uh, what else do I hear? Um, when people tell us to speak English or they assume that we're really foreign or something like that, or when job recruiters think I'm from China, so they're like, oh, do you need sponsorship? That's sort of a transgression or, or a microaggression. Um, so, can, right, can somebody else speak to that, by the way? Yeah, bro. Um, it's interesting because we're in like a rare position where, well, at least I feel this way, that where we are people of color, but we don't experience the same privileges as the majority groups. So it's a business where you just ally with the marginalized groups inside the people of color without directly being affected by them. So. Okay, so when I look at the two, the two, when I look at you compared to these two guys, yeah. right, how do you, within the community, do you, do you all see, your, to what degree do you see yourselves as one single group? Like Asians, do you ever see that, or do you see yourselves as different? Like I think it's different for Indians, just because I guess we like, look kind of different. Really close. So um, it's kind of like its own distinct group. Like when you said ha have some Asian students up here, like there's a little still a little question in my mind. Like, does he mean Indians, or like does he mean just like South, like that part of Southeast Asia? Uh huh. So like I guess that's what makes us, what sets like them apart from people of my ethnic group. So people who are Indians. Pakistanis, let's say, yeah. Sri Lankans, etc. So sometimes if someone says Asian, you don't immediately put yourself like in you, that category. Like for a lot of us, it's like, yeah, we are Asian, but we don't know if like a white person asking for an Asian means an Asian like me or an Asian like, like everyone in Asia. Uh-huh, uh-huh, like got you. Okay, got you. Do you consider him Asian? Uh, no. No? I feel Asian is no, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 this is not, there's I'm no sorry. right or wrong. No, 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 but listen. No, but this is, tell, what, what we want, what I want you all to do, and then we're going to, we definitely are going to talk about you. We're going to talk to everybody in a second. Right down here, we're with these guys. So this is what I want to learn. I want to learn how, the, what, what I want you to teach the class is how the Asian community in the United States, Asian Americans, walk through these issues. So you're saying, you don't you wouldn't consider you don't consider him Asian, All right off the top of your head. Yeah. So geographically, Asia spans from from like China all the way to Middle East, all the way to Turkey and Russia. Yep. So would we consider them Asians? 
uh, geographically per se. And also I've met a lot of Indian people who say they don't want to be associated with East Asian people. Like they don't want people to associate them with Chinese or like Korean people or so. They want to be known as Southeast Asian or like South Asian. Uh-huh. Okay, I got you. So if someone then, if you have to fill out a form and, it's a, and the only possibility is Asian, you just put that down, but it's not the first thing you would put. Yeah, for me, it's just like, I guess there's so many different cultures than like the mainstream Asian culture kind of like differs from Indian culture. So culture, I feel like it's like, I wouldn't say like jump off the bat and say I'm Asian, but like I like specify Indian. Just okay. Like, okay. Like, got you. All right, man. Anybody else want to have anything to say on that particular? How about you? Um, I see a lot of times, like, people will be like, like, they'll ask me what I am, and I'll say that I'm Asian. Well, like, if someone asks me what I am, I'm going to say Indian, but, like, if they're like, oh, like, what race, I'll say Asian, and they'll be like, oh, but you're not Asian Asian. Cause, you're like, not Asian Asian. Yeah, because they're, they're not looking, because a lot of people don't count South Asia as Asia. They uh -huh. And also in that, a lot of people think South Asia is just India. When it's not, it's like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, all yeah. those other places. So, yeah. Bangladesh, I mean, it really goes on. So is that something that you navigate in your mind all the time, being, being Indian versus being Asian versus like when you say it, when you don't? Because, you know, it's like kind of walking. It's a really interesting place to be. Um, I mean, like I never had to give it much thought. Cause, like, I went to a predominantly white high school, and people there didn't consider me as Asian. They thought that India was its own continent. Yeah. So, I mean, like... Americans have that, by that the way. That's not just thing. a white thing. Americans are pretty. Do you... Do people ever assume you're black or call you black? You, you thought I was black once. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> what does that mean to you? When I said I thought you, when I said I, I asked you if you were black, what does that, what did that mean to you? I mean, it didn't mean anything to me. Like, it's just what it is, I guess. Like, yeah. there's nothing to it. No, no, I, I got you. So, but how often does that happen? Um, that was actually the first time I've ever been. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'll just consider you black from here on out. Yeah. Okay, so anybody Anybody else? Dude, do you have any thought about when you, or do you? any of you have thoughts about Indians? All right, let, let's keep going, man. Um, so do you, cons do you, do you, let me, let, let me just talk to the two of you for a second. Growing up, adopted, right? G give us the, What's what's the cool about that? What's, what do you what would you like the world to know, as you walk through the world? These you know your ancestry, your DNA, is from East Asia. Wait, hang on. You're is from Vietnam, and you from China, right? What your your DNA admixture is from this part of the world, but yet here you are, and you both grew up in white families. What would you like the world to know about your experience? Honestly, like 99% of the time, I don't th think about my ancestry um, or the fact that I'm Asian because I'm surrounded by white people 100% of the time usually. Um, so it's not really a big thing in my family. It was more so like when I was younger, my parents tried to like, um, you know, tie me to my roots of being Chinese. So they kind of, you know, shared a little bit of the Chinese ancestry and history. So I know like a little Chinese history and I know some people around where I grew up that are of Chinese descent. But like most of the time, um, my friends forget I'm Asian. You know, I don't really think about it on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't really consider myself like part of the Chinese community here um, because I'm not like ethnic, like, Racially, I'm Chinese, but ethnically, I'm not. So how are you? Yeah, exactly. So you don't consider, you don't consider yourself Chinese American no. or Asian American? No, I don't. I consider yeah. myself American. I've had Chinese citizenship for like 16 months of my life, and that was it. Yep, so you're American. Do you ever, do you ever think, have you ever, have you ever referred to yourself as white Americans? No. <laughs> Just American? No, because I know I'm not white, but like. 
No, because I, I ask that because I have a lot of students who, who are of Asian ancestry and many who are adopted who grow up just call, even calling themselves white. Yeah, I it's, like refer to myself like, you know, to my friends and my family, like basically I'm white. Like I'm as, got you. like my friends joke that I'm whiter than they are, like, cause I like, you know, white, technically what white people things are. Yeah. But I don't look white, I guess is the only thing different. Yeah, I got you. Okay. How about you? What would you... Um, yeah, I agree 100% with what, what, what Sarah just said. Um, I was adopted at six months, so like I have no ties to my ancestry or anything like that. My family is white, and my yeah, my whole family is white, so I have no connection to the Asian community here on campus or anything. And I went to like a predominantly white high school, so I consider myself an American. But like on my thing, I like mark like Asian American because I have to. So you, you, I, so you, but you identify as, the primary identification is American? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And your friends are f from what background? Uh, they're mostly white. Mostly white? Mm -hmm. And your, did your parents also try to keep you connected to Vietnamese culture? Um, I don't really remember when I was younger. Um, I have a little brother, he's adopted too, and he's been more like, interested in his like culture and everything i have never really shown much interest but they've always like kept it an option um like they want to take us they want to take us back to vietnam and everything um but i don't they never were like closed off about it uh-huh uh -huh. hang on one sec bro Z keep, bro zoom in a little tighter okay so next question um <laughs> oh you want i want people to see your smiling face all right so listen do you have any interest, do you personally have any interest in Vietnamese culture? Honestly, not really. Not like any offense to like that culture or anything. That's just not how I've grown up. And like, I have more connections to my white family than I do my Vietnamese family because I was adopted like six months. I literally remember nothing. Um, I wasn't even a Vietnamese citizen for more than a year. Like. And, so. and so let me ask you, like, do you have any connection? Do you feel like you want to have any connection to Chinese culture? It's like I'm interested in the Chinese culture, but I'm not, I don't connect myself to it. So like learning yeah, yeah. about it, I find it interesting, but I find it just as interesting as learning about African-American culture. Or, There's no special connection. Right. Or Nigerian. Yeah, or like it'd be just Norwegian. as cool to learn about Norwegian culture as it would Chinese culture. I just... Yeah. Um, I find it interesting, but I have no, like, connection to, like, actually immerse myself in the culture. I did go back to China when I was younger yeah. um, on, like, a cultural trip. So, like, I did get to immerse myself. And it was cool, but, like, I don't speak the language, which I think for, like, Asian Americans is, like, one of the biggest barriers between connecting yourself with the culture because speaking the language is very difficult. So, and there's no reason you should, there, like, so we're going to come back. There's no reason that the two of you should have any connection at all, right? It's like, there's no reason that I should have any connection to, I don't know, Japanese culture, right? It's like, it's as foreign to me, like, your, China is as foreign to you, and Vietnam is as foreign to you, as Japan is as foreign to me. So, like, why would you have any expectation at all? But that's the question that would often go there. Uh-huh. All right, cool. All right, man. You, <laughs> you. What? So, where, where, where's your what's your ancestry again? Um. Oh, okay. My parents are from Taiwan. From Taiwan. Yeah. So, have you ever been to Taiwan? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And like, how? So, what do you, what do you what do, what have you what do you know about? Where are you in the race conversation here in the United States? Like, like, just say in this class, the issues that come up and. Um, I would consider myself an Asian American. It's like its own category, kind of, because, yeah. like, in terms of me, I'm technically like an ABC, an American born Chinese, but I do have like, like a higher level kind of like I can speak Mandarin, like, I speak Mandarin at home. So, like, yeah. I, yeah, so I'm considered like, I'm Asian American, but like I'm not. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to no, 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 that's cool. So listen, so you speak Mandarin at home, and how is that different? And you speak Chinese, you speak Mandarin too. Uh, Cantonese, Cantonese? Yeah. bro. Where are you from again? 
Ch I speak, it's like a Fujin dialect. Fujin? Yeah. yeah. And do you speak English? <laughs> Look at you, English. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you poor soul. All right. <laughs> Where's your culture? Get some culture. All right. So listen. So do you, how do you, how is it different than for, because the, it can, so there's nobody up here that, well, wait. Do you, do you speak just English? No. What, do you, what else do you speak? Taluku. Taluku? Yeah? Okay. So listen. So how is it when you run into people who are Asian Americans and they don't speak any of the language? Not, not you two, because you're, you're not Asian American, right? I mean, right, you're not, you're not Asian American, which is really interesting. By the way, do you all look at them as Asian American? Even though they're adopted? You still would, you would still bring them onto your team? Yeah? So they're, even though they're saying they're not on your team. I, I identify more with a white person than an Asian person. So yeah. I think that's what, that's why I would not be on their team, in my opinion. Wait, so you're, but they're saying they would put you right. on their team. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they're not, dude, listen, here, take a look. They look really fast. They're, they're actually whiter than I am. Okay. See that? They're whiter. No, look. Um, well, how do we want to look at this? Do you want to look at it in terms of travel, in terms of experience, in terms of speaking another language, right? Because I'm essentially fluent in Spanish. I've lived all around the world. I have this. I have that. I'm like, they're, the two of them are whiter than I am from lots of different perspectives. So, But you all are saying, but you would still put them on the Asian team just because of what they look like, even though they don't want to be on the Asian team. All right. Let me ask you this. What is misunderstood about Asian Americans? What's most misunderstood? Um, that all of us like math. Yeah. Uh, I hate math. I like barely passed math 140, uh, dropped out of physics. I, when people come up to me thinking I can solve their like late stat like class problems, I'm like, what the heck is that? Yeah. But I guess it like, it like slightly is a microaggression against me, but it also helps me because people think I'm smart. What do you mean by microaggression? Smart. What do you mean? Because we haven't, re I haven't used that word in this class. It's like a slightly racist thing. It may not be intended to be bad, but it's just a comment that the recipient finds disturbing or racist and they have to keep it to themselves. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I got you. All right, yeah. so for you, people are asking you if you're good. Do pe is that true for other people? Do people assume you're good at math? Yeah. Are you good at math? I mean, in like high school, but like now my field is really concerned math that heavily. So like when I had to take it, I was pretty good at it. But like the second I got out of that class, I don't remember a single thing. It's so like when my friends like ask me for help on it, I'm like, I, I cannot help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that true of other? Are you too good at math, by the way? Yeah. Are you good at math? In high school, same thing? All right, so there it is. What else, what else is misunderstood about Asians? Well, not to, like, disagree with you, but I think one of the biggest things for adopted people, and maybe I'm wrong, but they assume that, like, we are Asian and that we have Asian parents and that we do identify as Asian people. And, like, I am physically, I look like an Asian person. I mean, the minute I open my mouth, most Asian people realize that I'm not from China because I have no accent and like I don't even sound like I would speak Chinese. So I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest misconstrued things about Asian Americans is that like there's many different varieties and I don't mm -hmm. even speak the language and I have no ties to it. So mm -hmm. they, they assume I identify with them and that I am Asian. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you? Do you have anything people misunderstand? Um. What do you think is most misunderstood about Asians? So, so Ryan said, like, you know, Asians are good at math and like certain things. Do you, is there anything else that we should know? Yeah. You don't know? Do you got one, bro? The Asians have bad hygiene. Like have bad hygiene? Oh yeah. Like there's this huge. Wait, is that just Indians or Indi Indians? Like Indians, Indian smelly, bad hygiene, all that stuff. Yeah. Where's I mean, that come from? People in India, I guess. Yeah, you know, maybe it's from I like guess. all the spices and stuff. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't really know where it comes from, but like, 
I can proudly say I have pretty solid hygiene. Wait, hang on. Let me be the judge of that, oh. right? <laughs> yeah, he's cool. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, there's one. What else? What else? Yeah, I think ahead. yellow fever and fetishization is like a bad, is a pretty big thing for Asian women, and I feel like, like uh, through a couple experiences and from a couple of my white friends, I've not friends from some white people I've heard they said they really like Asian girls. They think they're sexier or something. I've heard from black people say that Asian girls are also really sexy or something like that. It's like a trophy almost. And, Asi and Asian guys? And Asian guys are just kind of nerds or just not looked at. Um, like, I remember you had a research paper in the yeah, past yeah, class. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, so one, one thing that you got, let me just ask, you two in particular, your Indians are a little different, East Asians on this, but definitely you two guys. So the least, the, the Asian men are when we do date when we do research on dating apps and dating sites and like who is most likely to get to get attention from other people this is swipe right all right yeah who gets swiped left the most which is i'm not interested in are asian men and by far and away that people don't even have any idea what they're looking for so i've done it sometimes in this class do what do you have any experience with that how, what's date? How's the dating scene for you? Have you ever dated? Who do you date? Wait, are you straight, by the way? Bye. What's that? Bye. Bye. Who do you date? I mean, I re I'm not really in the dating scene right now, but I mean, I guess attractive people. Dude, you people. might be after today's class. <laughs> There's a nice close-up of you on the screen. You might get some attention. All right. Alrighty. So who? Do you have you what, have you had any experiences with that of you of you of people not being interested in you because you're an Asian man? Yes, you, a little can, bit. Can you do you have any stories or anything? Any way you could say that? Not really stories, but I guess some people just don't find, let's say, Asian men attractive, uh -huh. or they're looking for a specific type of person. Yeah, uh, and I guess that that's just how society is. Um, Asian men are just not perceived as either masculine or um, they just seem uh, too into their studies to even focus on their relationship. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of stereotypes that are out there that probably um, make people think differently and already have a perception on Asian men yeah, yeah, exactly. before they even get to really know the person. Yeah, so one of the things that we see in particular, um, this, what this research study was, was they were looking at like how like the two like you two guys like how much in order to be to be as um, to compete hang hang on bro just come here really fast like say with this guy he's taller so that but like just to compete with this guy on the market he's just an average looking white dude you know what I mean <laughs> okay dude you're really handsome actually he's a really handsome looking white guy and. No, but to compete with him on the dating market, what this study was, what they were looking at was how much more money these two guys have to make, how much more they have to be, in or how much more educated, how much more money they have to make, et cetera, et cetera, to get as much attention, say, on like dating websites as this dude, right? What's your name, bro? Justin. Justin, as Justin. And it's really a lot. And the issue is what you're saying is like people, Asian men are not are not seen as desirable sexual partners or in any way. Thanks, dog. Yep. Yeah, man. Nice hair, by the way. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Do, what, do you all have... Dude, have you... Are you, are, are you all on the dating scene? Are you on the dating market? <laughs> do you find... Do you find... Okay, hang on. I'm going to put the... I'm going to put both of you on the spot. Oh, don't ask Ready? Think you're gonna ask oh, no. I'm gonna asking. Ask I'm going right there to the deep end. Do you find Asian... Are you straight? Yeah. Do you find Asian men attractive? Dude, <laughs> all the Asian men in the world are listening, are waiting for your answer. Do you find Asian guys attractive? You don't? I, I apologize, but I do not find Asian men attractive, no. Whoa, all right. Go ahead. And you? Yeah, I don't really either. You don't either? No offense to, like, anyone. Whoa. All right, where do you think that's from? Like, do you have any thoughts on that? 
Dude, hang on, Jack. Come here a second. Look at this. Look at this guy. Come on, man. He's like a really handsome dude. What's not attractive about him? Okay, so the, I think the sweater I, maybe. I, I think, think what? the issue is like he's, he looks nice. I think the issue is that I grew up around white people. So what I so in movies and media you portray white guys as attractive and also as the only Asian person. Every Asian guy I've been around with, people assume they're my brother because of all the white people. Oh right, I got it. So you. I don't know if it's construed from oh he looks like me, he could be related to me. Maybe. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you. Do, you. do you have any thoughts on that? Do you have a thought on that? I mean, I've had, let's say, Asian Oops. girl, like female friends that pretty much just said, not to me personally, but they just said they're not attracted to Asian men. To Asian guys? Yeah. Who are they attracted to? Typically white guys, but I think that's just society as a whole. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, when one of my Bro, friends... Bro, hang on. We're not leaving you in the dust back there, by the way. When my friends finally got into college, uh, she was like, oh, I can't wait to date a white guy. <laughs> and our high school was all Asian and Hispanic, so I was like, of course she said that. Yeah. Um, but another thing, I guess, in terms of maturity, we we'll just date whoever is interested in us. And if someone is, like, interested in a lot of races to date, then that interests me because that means they're interested in multicultural things, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. Do you find Asian guys attractive? Do you find Indian guys attractive? Well, how about, dude, look at, hang on, look at, hang on, take the mic. Well, look at him. Come on, man. Just give him, look at, he's got, dude, he's got some guns, this guy. Look at that. Come on, seriously? You don't, who do you find attractive? Justin here? <laughs> do I really have to answer this? Yeah, you do, actually. <laughs> Black guys? Since you're black, after all. <laughs> or do you just want to be black? Or I want you to be I black. Like I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, you don't find Asian guy? You don't find him attractive? On the end, he's like no, a really handsome dude. because it's like... Wait, are you gay? No, I'm not. I'm not. All right. <laughs> it's just like... And what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. Seriously? It's kind of like... What she was saying, like coming from a predominantly white, like town, if I'm next to an Indian guy, they'll automatically think that's like my brother or something. So it's just weird. Yeah, dude, how do you feel about that? See, like I've always had wait. Hang on a second. Hang on. Do you find Indian women attractive? I had a girlfriend who was half Indian one time. Yeah. <laughs> wait, are you straight? Yeah, yeah. All right. It's like. I'm not gonna say no, cause like Priyanka Chopra, ooh, like Nick Jonas's wife, ooh. It's so, like I'm dude, not gonna... even she's she's straight, and even she's attracted to be Priyanka. Yeah, Chopra. exactly. So like, I don't see for me, it's like there have been plenty of girls who like aren't attracted to me, but I think that's just my personality, yeah. or like stat or like stature or something. Like I don't think it's purely based off of my skin color. I don't know, man. But there, there definitely has been like one occasion where a girl's been like. No, it's like he's cool, but I don't want to date a brown Dude, guy. Dude, if you were in India, you'd be dating brown women, right? And if you Probably. were, and if you were only, if you only lived in India, you'd be dating brown guys. You know what I mean? And if you were, you know, so it's a, it's a thing that we learn. Are you straight? Are you on the dating yes. scene at all? No. <laughs> yeah, that's because your parents might watch this one day. If you were, who would you be dating? I think I'm the only one out of everyone that's actually into Asian people. <laughs> oh, really? You're into Asian people? All right. Yeah. What does I that mean, mean? What do you mean? Um, I mean, my parents would prefer if I actually date an Asian person. So it's like ingrained in me to be like, oh, like... I should probably look for Asian boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you probably should, and then it's just fine that you do. And you travel back to Taiwan a lot, you said? Yeah. So it's, for you, it's more mm -hmm. natural. All right. Yo, it's really interesting. All right, man. Hey, we're going we're gonna to move on. Anything, anyone else want to, any final thing you want to say? Dude, honestly, you should. I do want to say something. Yeah, okay, I go just want to say something about not being attracted to Asian guys, because it's not 
the Asian guy I'm not attracted to. It's like you're attracted to people that you have things in common with. And going back to the whole like race thing, I don't have much in common with an Asian man. So therefore, I don't find them attractive. Uh, we could are there any Asian men in here? Any, any men in here who are adopted who have ancestry in China or Korea? Anybody? Did I'll find somebody. Maybe I'll date him. I'm going to find someone that you can go on, on a date with. I'll even pay for the date. Okay. So we'll just see what happens. All right. All right. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hey, by the way, and I don't, the whole dating thing, I don't think it's like a good, it's not, it's, it's just fine. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think it's actually really, if I sit back and I think about that conversation, I, it's just very illuminating how the way we think about race and the way we talk about these issues is just immensely complex, man. Okay, you ready? Here's what I need. Yo, um, Yo, man. Um, okay, wait. So I need a few people who are mixed race who can tell a story. Dude, you? You? And who else? I need, I need a couple more people who are mixed race. Bro, I need two more. Uh, is that definitely you? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just, that's good enough. We can just, yeah, no, come, come down. All right, man. You can move down and then you can all sit up there since there's only four of you. Bro. All right, man, you can move, move down and then we'll fit all four of you on the table. All right, man, bro, I'll start with you. What's your name? Um, I'm Adam. Um, I'm half Pakistani and I'm half like American. Like my mom's like from Scranton. I don't really know like what that half is. Pakistani and half like, like white, white white American. Yeah, sure. From Scranton. From like Honesdale. Honesdale, dude. That's its own racial category. <laughs> and you? Brecklin. My mom is. Wait, white. what's your name? Brecklin. Brecklin. Yes. Mom is white. Dad is African American and Native American. Uh huh. Okay. I'm Taylor. I'm Cuban, Black, and Jewish. Cuban, black, and Jewish? Yeah. Dude, awesome. All right. I'm Amanda. Um, I'm black, Puerto Rican, and uh, Italian. Wait, how, you see you're half what? Black, Puerto Rican, and Italian. Black, Puerto Rican, and Italian. Where are you from in the U.S.? Philly. From Philly? I should have known from your accent. Where are you from, bro? New York. New York? The city or the state? Uh, Yonkers, North Bronx. Yonkers? All right, man. So, um, so listen, man. Nobody... Nobody, the way, the way this thing works, the way social life works, is nobody lets anybody be on two teams at once. Like, you cannot be on two teams. If you're on their team, you know, if you support that team over there, then you don't support this team over here. It's like you can't, if you go to the blue-white game and try to support both blue and white, you can't even do that. You got to pick a side. Everybody has to pick a side, right? So... Whose side do you, whose side, are, and you're not picking a side, man. They're going, we're going to force you to pick a side. So how does that play out in your life? I mean, I'm not saying it should be that way. This is just how it is. How does it play out in your life? And bro, you were shaking your head first on that. So, um, at least from my life experience, it's like, it's definitely been like a no for me, like hardcore no. Like, um, so I'm from like Maryland. There's like a heavy population of like brown and like Muslim peoples in like the DMV area. And so, like, at least, like, growing up from my mosque, like, I have an accent when I, like, speak Arabic. And so when I would recite Arabic, like, in my mosque or whatever like that, like, my earliest memory of that is, like, the brown people in the class saying, like, oh, I didn't know, like, white boy could say it like that. It's, like, dead serious. And then also, like, on the white, like, like, on the social, like, school side of things, like, I'd go to school with, like, you know, like, white people, and they'd, like, as soon as like ISIS started coming out and stuff like that, I'd get like shown ISIS videos every day, get called terrorists, stuff like that. And so it'd be like both sides of it. And, and how do you identify though? So, I mean, it's, it's like Pakistani American, but how do you uh, actually 
really identify in your mind? I like don't. You I don't? don't. I choose not to because like both cultures are like it's like an audition, you know. It's like if people are just like you're not what we're looking for on like both sides of this. Well, it's just okay. So neither, you know. Uh huh. All right. How about you, Brecklin? Um, I typically choose not to identify either because that's something I struggled with as a child. Um, how'd you How'd you struggle with that? Just I wasn't white enough for my white community in class, and I wasn't black enough for the black kids in school. So. And when you say you weren't white enough or black enough, how mm -hmm. did that play itself out? Like what, what happened to tell um, you that? Like if I would try to hang out with like the black kids in school, they'd be like, oh no, like you're too white for us. Um, and vice versa with the white kids. And so, then if you tried to hang out with white people, they yeah, would say you don't fit like, with us. Yeah, you don't really fit in in this crowd either. So who did you hang out with? Um, I mean, I still had like a handful of white friends and black friends that we kind of all just like banded together, but like the majority of like my classroom experience and like on the playground and stuff like that, that's what I would experience. I was the only mixed kid in my elementary school and then there was one other black girl in elementary school. And so we were like best friends. And then mm -hmm. there, as I grew up, there was more diversity coming into our town, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, bro, how about you? Um, I probably identify with being Cuban just because like most of my friends and where I grew up, most people are Spanish. So that's what, kind of what I identify with. But I also feel like for sure, like whenever I'm with my white friends, like I'm the dark one, I get treated like that. Whenever I'm with the black guys, like I'm the white guy, like I'm all corny, I'm all like that. But I don't know, that's just how it is. So white, so white, do you, and you, wait, hang on. So tell me again, like which, tell me the ways and like with Brecklin, how, what are the ways in which this struggle to choose sides emerged in your life? I mean, it's not really a struggle for me. Like, I feel like I'm a kind of sociable person, so I've always kind of got along with both groups, been kind of in the middle. I don't mean, know. Race mm -hmm. is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, okay, all right, that's cool. Yo, man, how about you? Um, I think I identify with all three. Um, with, with, with all three? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Puerto Rican, Italian, Puerto Rican, American. Italian, black. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, the family I was raised with, um, they're black and Italian. Um, my dad's side is Puerto Rican, and I wasn't really like raised with them, but I just started to like be around them, so I'm kind of learning more about the culture. And I mean, I feel like overall I fit in. Um, so, in know. what ways were you accepted by? your black and Italian relatives, and what ways were you not? Um, I think definitely, well, my relatives, I mean, I already automatically fit in. Um, I think also living in Philly, like, I was more accepted as black anyway, because, like, all my schools were predominantly black, and because I'm black, like, I just fit in with them. So but I think being here, like, being lighter, I, I don't really, like, fit in with, the black community here, like being light skinned, uh -huh. like I am. Because I mean, I'm not, I don't really have color to me. Like, I'm. No, because you're really yeah. light skinned. Yeah, I really am. Like, nobody would assume that, like, I'm black or mixed with black. So you're. Wait, so who's black in your family? Um, on my mom's side. On your mom's side? Yeah. And are they dark skinned black? Like. My mom is, um, like, light brown. Light brown? Yeah. Uh huh. And how. Do, do people. Do white people immediately assume you're not white? Or? Yeah, because I mean, next to the basic white person, I don't look white. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the odd thing, right? Like, yeah. like I don't look white, but I don't look black. I don't look Puerto Rican. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, so, um, so is there? I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to to this. I want to stay with this. Is there a part of your, I'm going to stay with this question, but I want to ask other people. Is there like a part of your family that accepts you more than the other part of your family? Um, I think that like the, definitely the white side does actually. The Just, white side? The white side definitely. Accepts you more? Accepts me more. Like I get like, I'm definitely in way more contact with like the brown side of my family more, but like. Um, I definitely, like 100%. Race doesn't even come up in, on like the white side of the family. Like, like the brown side, it comes up all the time. How does it come up? What happens? This is the Pakistani side. This is the Pakistani and side. And these are Pakistani Americans or? 
These or are, in Pakistan. Have you been to Pakistan? I've been to Pakistan, yes. Yeah. Where where about? Karachi. Karachi? Yeah. Okay. So um it comes up in a different way. Like um when it comes up to like culture conversations, I guess, like like I don't know, like brown people in here like biryani. I guess like we have arguments about like aloo or like chicken or like whatever we want to put in there. I guess it's like a dumb example. But like culture arguments like that or like culture conversations like not that I can't participate, it's like they think that I don't know what I'm talking about, you yeah. know? Or that I assume like that I know nothing about culture, like religion in general, you know? Yeah. Um yeah. Mhm. Mm okay, got it. How about how about you? Like what ways does this which side of your family accepts you more? Um, I don't think it's a matter of acceptance, but I'm just closer with my the white side of my family. Um, uh -huh. My mom's side of the family is, like, she has a lot of siblings, and there's a lot of cousins on that side, whereas my dad, he was the only one out of his three siblings to have children. So uh -huh. we're just more involved with the white so side of So there's just fewer family. people. Right. So, like, the, when you think about it, family and extended family. Right. And, like, gatherings and that sort of thing, it's much more your white side. So you just sort of are. Yes. Uh-huh. All right, man. Bro, do you have a response to that? Uh, yeah. I feel like whenever I see, like, my Spanish family, they're always like, oh, your Spanish is trash, like, all like that. Or you can't dance or something like that. I think I'm a good dancer, but. And then, anyway, like, when I, with my white family, it's kind of like. It's just different. I don't know. Like I'm like the odd one out. Like me and my brother, the odd one out. But I'm wait, I want to go back to them. the dancing piece. Yeah. So they're I, so they're just they're busting on you. Yeah. But is there a part of you that feels like they're actually not busting on me? They're actually kind of there's like something underneath that. Pause. Is that um, what you're saying? Yeah. It's like it's all love. Like I know they love me and all that, but I'm just not. Like I never. They're from Cuba, directly from Cuba. Yeah. And since I grew up in New York, like it's different, and just the culture is different. So yeah, I definitely see the differences between me. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, what are what are like the coolest things about being mixed? I think you said I'm different. Like somebody will look at me and be like, "What the hell are you?" And like, I kind of have fun with it. Like I'll say different stuff. Like I'll say something different depending on the day, or I'll say guess or something. But I don't know. I think it makes me different. It's pretty cool. Does it does it bother you when people ask you that? It does it get to, old or something? When I was younger, I'd just be like, "What? Like I'm human? Like what do you mean what I am?" But like now, I just have fun with it, really. Yeah. yeah. How about what's the coolest thing about being mixed? Um, I think like learning about um, the different cultures and from being the able inside, to practice. you mean? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, like we practice our like Italian culture, Black culture, Puerto Rican culture. Well, I do. So you're pr so you're really connected to all three cultures. Pretty much. Yeah, that's I mean, I don't cool. speak Spanish. I don't speak Italian. So. But you're connected kind of to disconnect. cultural practices. Yeah. But you speak Philly, <laughs> Philly ease, man. Not everyone can do that. All right. So that's one of the coolest things is being connected to different cultures. Yo, how about so? How about you? What's one? Of the, what's the, like? Give me the coolest thing about being mixed. What's the most awesome part about it? Did I ask you that already? No, I just don't really have an answer. I mean, you I guess really just being able to not like play on all teams, but I've gotten to learn about like my dad's struggles growing up yeah. in the 50s and 60s as an African-American man and my parents' struggles as a biracial couple. So just being able to actually, rather than just being a white person and empathizing with the African-American struggle, I actually have ancestry that has had to go through that, and so I can understand it, and that kind of motivates me in what I've learned. And so, so, under, so you have a personal stake exactly. in other people's experiences, right. and in particular the African-American experience, right. so it's like mm -hmm. leads you to really be in it more. Yes. Do you feel like the... and? What's your experience in, with your connection to the African American community? Do they are you accepted in that sense of like they understand that or to what degree are you? Right. Um, my Hold the mic close. Yo, hang on, because I I have a hard time hearing. Man. Yeah. Go ahead. So Hold my dad's mic. a small business owner in our town, and so yep. most like everyone knows that I'm his daughter, so I'm widely accepted in the African American community there because they know that like he's my father. But yep. if I'm 
like here, for example, or in other communities, people don't automatically think that I'm black or that I'm even. So mixed. like, so like here in a place like Penn State, like if I, if someone asks, "Hey, I need a black volunteer," you wouldn't. Would you raise your hand or not, or would you? Do you yeah, identify? Yeah, I would raise my hand, but other people don't think that. I often get mistaken for Hispanic or yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of other things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly, because DNA-wise, in terms of DNA ancestry, your DNA is probably very similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Okay, hey, give me the, um, how, the, can we talk about the dating world really fast? How do you all navigate that? That's <laughs> yeah, bro, how do, you nav how do you navigate that, bro? It's like, I don't know. I'm like Muslim, so it's like weird. Wait, are, are, so are you, so do you identify, wait, so your dad is Pakistani. Yes. Your mom, mom is American, assume, yes. I assume Christian. No, actually. She's Muslim? She's Muslim. Yeah? yeah. Which, did she com convert? Yes. Yes, she did. Okay, got it. So you identify as Muslim. All right, mm -hmm. so go ahead. How do you navigate the dating world as a mixed person? I don't know. I mean, like, I don't, like, people are up here saying, like, they have, like, preference. I really don't like I've never looked at anyone's race and just been like you know what like that impacts me like I've had people on like the brown side of my family say like like I'm not into like a particular race but like I've never had that issue at all uh-huh um I don't, I don't know I so guess like yeah in the and in the Pakistani world are you considered light brown like how do people talk about skin talk about your skin skin I mean it like it differs like I tan like well like i don't get burnt but like my skin really changes based on the sun i mean like yeah. it's similar now because I, I go to penn state it's like yeah. i don't see sun for months yeah but like um like during the summer i get like dark like darker like like nobody up here but um yeah. I, don't, I don't really know all right it's a okay. weird question just because like i feel like I don't know. It it really doesn't matter. Like in the Pakistani realm, like I'm pretty white. Like I'm I'm considered. I look white. Yeah. You know. So. Yep. All right. That's cool. How do you navigate the dating world? What does that question mean? Well, the question is. Listen, I I know I'm not. I what I what I want to do is I'm I'm not like trying to get personal with you guys at all. But what I want to know is, and what I want to help with is like in an ideal world. In maybe in an ideal world, if we were like really connected to people from all backgrounds, then we would just have a natural inclination to be attracted to people of all backgrounds, right? Because you just would. That's how human beings are. That's how we're built. And so you all, because you're more mixed, right? The natural, if I had to guess, I'd be like, well, you're probably attracted to people from, does, it wouldn't really matter to you, right? Although it might, in terms of, because you're all light-skinned, so it might have more of an impact, like the degree to which you might be attracted to people who have dark skin. So I just want to ask, like, who are you attracted to, and what, what's behind that, and how is that? Um, well, I agree with what you said about, like, because we're mixed, we're attracted to, like, a wider variety of people compared uh -huh. to, like, the people that were just up here speaking. So I would say that I'm generally more attracted to African American men. You're more attracted men. to African American men. Yeah, or white men because like that's what I know. Yeah. Like, I have okay, got you. White family. Not black Pakistani family. guys. Not necessarily. Yeah. Oh, well, he's a nice guy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm just trying to get you <laughs> taken care of here. All right. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> All right, that's cool. That woman. Yep. Bro, how about you? I got no type. Hot. <laughs> What's that? I got no type. I love all women. Yeah? All women equally. Well, so you're straight then? I'm straight, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how do you like, have you always been that way or is that? Maybe when I was younger, I was kind of, I only really dated like Spanish girls because that was what I was around. But there's no preference for me. Like if somebody's attractive, I find them attractive. It's not like anything's uh -huh. out of, yeah. Uh-huh. All right, cool. All right, man. Yo, how about you? Follow me on the gram. Yeah. How, how about you? Um, my boyfriend is like really dark skin. Really dark so, skin? Yeah, I'm attracted to dark skin, yeah. Dark skin guys? I mean, I dated one Hispanic before, but everybody else was dark skin. Mm hmm. And what's behind that? Just know, is? Just what I like. Just one of those things? All right, man.
Hey, what, what's the, what, here's the final thing. Um, you know, by the way, you all, the, the data on people who are mixed race is that, that you all are much more likely to, to date, not only date, but also marry, partner, marry somebody who, who is themselves of mixed race than by far and away than people who are of a single ancestral background. Right. So it's like that's what happens. You sort of just keep it going, you know, because it's really hard to be attracted to just one person. Right. It's like you're what we see is that your sociological world just kind of opens up and it just kind of spirals into all of the other pieces of your world, you know, which is kind of cool, which is where we're going, by the way. And we are we are for sure going with globalization to a world where and more and more people are of mixed ancestry. I mean, we're definitely going there. So. What's the, what's the most, this is the final question. What's like the most annoying thing about being mixed? Probably the idea that we have to choose what we identify as. Like uh -huh. we can't have our own identity. Like I have to be white. I have to be black. I have to be Native American. Like why can't I just be me? Uh-huh. Got you. Yeah. So that idea about why can't we all just be Americans? Right. That's like you all are really kind of saying that. Look, we are the most American of anybody because we're mixed. Yeah. Just like the U.S. is represented by people from all over the world. And you're sort of saying just be, be that. Yeah. And you were shaking your head. Do you agree with that? Yeah, like wholeheartedly. I think like, I don't know. I've heard like a lot of, like a lot of labels my entire life. And it's like, yeah, I use them just like not because I like them, just because like other people define me as that. Yeah. Like, I'll just say like, I don't know. Whenever I'm in a conversation with someone who's white, I'll be like, I'm brown. But whenever I'm in a conversation with anyone who's white, I'll say, wait, did I just go back on that? Yeah. I right, bet. Like whenever I'm talking to someone who's white, I'll say that I'm brown and like also vice versa. Just because like, I don't know, in that sense, it's so long to explain the fact that, yeah, no, I don't agree with either. And like, I don't know, it's just jumping off the deep end of like a pool of conversation. Of just like So you're just trying to like turn the conversation in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, how about you, man? What's like the most annoying thing? I would say just when people just like assume what you are, like some like, oh, you're white, but, like, but I'm not. Like I might look white, but as some people say I look white, but I don't know. Sometimes it gets on my nerves. But overall, I think it's a, it's a good experience. I like being what I am. Yeah, I wouldn't say you look white. I mean, like, I look at you, for example, and I'm like... You don't know, right? Yeah, I don't know. And oh, I would yeah. be... And then I would ask, like, dude, what's your ancestry? Like, yeah. what's your background? Yeah. 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 So that's pretty much it. Just All right, that's cool. I say the same thing. Same thing? Yeah. Like, since people don't know what I am, they just assume that I'm white. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Because I'm so light. Yeah. And then what is it, right? Like, what is it to be white, right? Because, like, you know, on one hand, you are. On the other hand, it's like, well, what are we? Because, well, we're both our, we're our, phys we're ancestry is our physical, biological admixture, right? Our DNA, but it's also our culture. And it's also our heritage and our ancestors and all of that. It's all of these things. And that's what we are. That's what makes us who we are. So, but definitely you're more and more the, the, the future of the world. Cool, man. Yo, all right, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Dude, dude, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, thanks. Bro. Yeah, do you have a camera, though? Yeah? Do you the man. Hey, we have a couple more minutes. All right. Hey, um, <laughs> dude, now I'm going to ride that home. Hey, uh, wait, so are we going to use your, tele your phone? Just the mic? All right, dude. Hey, does anyone have a question, by the way, about anything? Because we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to bring someone in on the phone here real fast. I wish we had a camera. Shit. Anyone have a question? I have a lot. I have questions. Dude. Dude. Seriously, anyone have a question? A comment? Anyone who's mixed that wants to add anything to that conversation? Yo, man. How, how many of you are just completely done with the semester and you're just like i just want to go home 
and be done. Go wherever you got to go. Damn. No, no, I don't mean that. Hang on. I, no, I want you to hear from a, a buddy of mine, but like, yeah, they're just done. I know. Can I tell you, I've been teaching for 35 years and I have learned that when I get to the last few weeks of the semester in the spring, just don't even, don't even try to hold the energy. Just let y'all sleep or do whatever it is you want to do, man, because I can't even make it happen. Yes, ma'am. So um, I'm Asian American, and I actually wanted to comment on like the parallels between being Asian American and people who are mixed race because yeah, very cool. Um, in my personal experience, I don't feel like I belong in the U.S. nor in China because whenever I go back and visit family, um, all of my relatives and a lot of people over there will be like, "Oh, the Americans here." because of the way that I carry myself, the, American. the way that I dress, like even if I have like little to no accent when I'm speaking Chinese, um, yeah. they still see me as American because of the way that I present myself. Yeah. But then here in the US, whenever somebody looks at me, the first thought is not that I'm American, the first thought is that I'm Asian. Yeah. And so it's as if like, I also don't belong anywhere as well. And I just wanted to point out the parallel between yeah, the two. Like it, like it doesn't matter where you go you're not you're not there like you're not in yeah it's re it's really fascinating it's, it's you, you don't right it's fascinating so yeah nobody would look at nobody here in the u.s would look at you and be like yeah or just imagine that yeah that's cool thanks man dude it's not you know what Yo, give me just a second. Yo, Brenton, can you hear me? Can 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 he just talk? Oh. Uh. Yo, hang on, just give me a second. Hey, um, so, dude, just, did you hear, if you heard that conversation, I just want you to, like, kick in on what it is to be Asian and adopted and here in the U.S. Just give us some words of wisdom from your experience. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 hang on. Hang on one second. Jeff, you are earning your pay today. Yeah, forget about it. We'll do it later. Wait, hang on. Why? No, that's all right. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> Come on, man. We're just going to see if you can. The pressure's on, my friend. You got four minutes. <laughs> all right. Close. Dude, hang on. Let me let me just take a shot of Brenton, who thinks he's talking to the class. All right, all right, man. So listen, here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say to you all. Uh, um, we we really we really do have two, two we have two special guests coming next week. One on Tuesday, two actually on Tuesday, and one on Thursday. Um, really looking forward to it. Uh, listen. Yo, I want to just say something really fast. Yo, give me your give me your undivided attention for a second. Look, 
it's going to be a really nice weekend. And the tendency, it's been a long winter, and the tendency is to really let loose. Just be safe. Okay? Cool? You want to cover my cellmates? Yeah. All right, man. You're in for real. Be ready for Tuesday. It's a lecture that'll change your life. Yo, and also, whoever's doing the bike, come down front. Rick is doing the bike.